and welcome, this is Doki Doki Literature Club and we're doing the Nesuski route so let's get straight to it. Okay, I completely forgot that I followed Nesuski pretty much in the first, <laughs> first couple of parts. Okay, okay, I didn't realise that I actually had followed Nesuski's route when I first played the game. So, so I'll start here for now because I can't go back. I can skip forward but I can't skip back. Anyway, all of Nesuski's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Ah, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking so much space in our closet, so I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still here. I just had to organise it a bit. It's all still there, I just had to organise it a bit. Ugh. The top, top shelf is far above Nasuski's head. She makes it a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez, this is so inconvenient. I'm moving all these back down. There's plenty of room on, room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Ah, Nasuski. There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Nasuski grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? Well, yeah. I mean, I knew it. Well, you know what? Just watch me. Nasuski hops up on the stool. Which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Ah ha. Careful, I know what I'm doing. Stands on the stool and Nasuski's thinker tips reach the top shelf. Stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books and Nasuski is being as stubborn as usual. Ugh. Nasuski uses her fingers to scoop one of the smaller boxes on the edge of the shelf. See? Ah! The box suddenly tips. Nasuski barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Wow! Losing balance, Nasuski hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! I've been almost fell, Nasuski is a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'd be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just. I said I can do it! I don't want your help, okay? Yeah. I'm just gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Nasuski forces her way past out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have desks attached. So they're just too inconvenient to fit in the closet. Aha! Nasuski trots over the teacher's desk which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls on its wheels back over the closet. Ah, it's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson so I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Nasuski climbs on the chair then slowly balances on her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with her against the side of the doorway and simply watch. Ah, there we go. See, I can easily do it now. Nasuski grabs a stack of mango and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Ah, the chair swivels. Nasuski catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting doing nothing? Who is it who told me not to help? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Nasuski. Just dang it. <laughs> Forgot. I hold the chair while Nasuski reaches at the back up. I can. I can almost see up her skirt. <laughs> Forced myself to turn away. Nesuski says she didn't think this through. Once she realizes I'll be dead, <laughs> Nesuski wraps her arms around the perfect girl's box set. Easily the largest one on the shelf. Ugh, heavy. Hey, Zanzara, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry up and take this one, huh? Then I'll have to get let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. Alright. Just let me stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Nasuski looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh? Nasuski looks like she just realised something, but she loses her balance if she moves. Moves. Nasuski, the box. What are you looking at? Ugh. You're trying to look at my, my, my. Nasuski, sh sh legs shake. I am not. I was just. Nasuski, don't try to move. Give me the box. You, you purr. Set me up. Go away. You, your suggestion. Get out. But I'll do it myself. Ah. The chair suddenly swivels beneath Yuri's feet. Nasuski! Ah! The scene turns into chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Nasuski's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you! Ooh. Oh! Crash! The full force of Nasuski's body against me frays me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Nasuski tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Ugh. My right arm and right back seriously felt the impact. 
Ugh. Slowly the Suzuki come to her senses. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Eh? Yeah? Suzuki seems to realise that it's not the floor she's beneath her. Gross, gross! A ah. fist pounds into my chest. Suzuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko. Evan, okay, bro? I heard a loud noise. Nasuski peers in. Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. I hope you're happy. So I hope you're happy. I, I didn't. Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no, my my. Eh? I look down. There's this kid in the floor holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the pages, desperately trying to smooth out. I must have landed on the page. There's this kid tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get out. Suddenly she gives up and slams the book shut and throws it onto the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. Siski, are you? No! A Siski boy squeaks. I see tears on her face. I'll get help help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so. No, Siski shakes her head, still looking down. No. I don't even care that much. I just. having a really bad day today. No, Siski stops again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's just. it's. it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? No, Siski shakes her head, just. every day. It's so hard. I just want to come to the club and Nesiski falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. All right. Well, I'll help clean this up, and I'll mo move the rest of your manga for you. Ah, I'll pick up volume two of the Perfect Girls. Well, we'll set this one aside. This will cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Nesiski looks at her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're, you're really nice to me. Yeah, that sounds really strange coming from Nasuski. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know. Nasuski yeah. lowers her head and stuff stuff with another sob. I'm not really, I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I can do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in the correct order. After a little bit, Nasuski starts helping. It isn't too long before we're done, and I'll host the hoist the box onto the shelf where Nasuski wanted to put it. Then I get the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of the books from the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop to the hop off the stool. Nasuski averts her gaze. Th thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Nasuski is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you aren't weren't, I'll make you anyway. You'll take a response before what you said. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist. Okay, good. We sit in the same spot as last time and I opened up the second volume. Nasuski's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing to things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle sort of repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed with how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Nasuski has a good taste after all. After some time, I, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. I guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even when you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get in, into it, you know. <laughs> Told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my, I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Who should I show my poem to first? Now it's going to be hard to skip this one because we've already done this in the first playthrough, so I'm not sure. I'll try. I'll skip all the others, but I will read through Nasuski. So she's going to be first, and then I'll just skip the others. Nesuski reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Ugh. Is that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously, if you, got, you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine, give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you. Yeah, Nasiski's face freezes, like she just realised something. You're trying to impress me? Nasiski vigorously scans her eyes over my phone one more time, then the phone sl slips over her hands and floats on the floor. I have to use the bathroom. Red face 
Nasiski quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Nazaris, did you do some, something to Nasiski? Build her with kindness. <laughs> I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, no, I just told her that. My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Nasiski. Hmm? Monica sees the poem line of and swiftly picks out. She reads it through, smiling, not fading for her face. I see. You wrote this for Nasuski, didn't you? I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Zazaris? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway. No, of course I didn't. How do you think Nesuzuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. There's just something for you to think about. Hey! Nesuzuki comes up and scratches, snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had noticed that we entered the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Ugh. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. If I had a bad habit of doing that, yeah? But since I wrote this poem, and we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Ugh. Nesuzuki freezes. He apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Zazar's done sharing his poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this, if you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh, never mind. Ah, Nesiski, I'll give you the poem, but it's still not very fair to her, sorry. And she hasn't got to read it yet. So what? Well, oh, I haven't read this yet. Nice. Well, I guess Zazar's is right, Nesiski. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Nasiski returns the poem. It's not like she's going to like it though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Okay, like spiders, okay. Not bad, right? Quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in the poem. I, I doubt I have to explain. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realise how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of the poem is an, an arrogant jerk, ignorant jerk. How do, do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be, to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Don't think you're afraid of people they find out. They make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it, doesn't, and it makes them happy. I think, I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to them. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday. I've been, well, been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so consider yourself lucky, okay? Uh -huh. Well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez. Let's look forward to tomorrow too, okay? Alright, I will. Who should I show my poem to next? Alright. Now I found out oh, what's so different. Oh, uh, it's different again. Ooh, I like this one. Sinzaris. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does it mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> that's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. It makes me feel things that it must be good. I'm a good poem. Okay, I know I can skip it, but I'm gonna go for it. Not sure exactly how it works. Then again, I guess comparing feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving us some thought? Ah, you want me to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Right, we've already seen this. Definitely seen this bit. I remember this, so skip right for it. Alright, okay. Yeah, uh, Yuri. Let's go for her. She might be. Oh, she's definitely new. Um, are you still mad at me? Eh? Disrespecting Nasuski yesterday. Ah, so there is difference. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you you prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, 
I disrespected you too, didn't I? I don't know. Yuri, you might be reading a little into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? You, I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. If I speak while thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. Hate me. So, please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time in Nasuski and Saru. Yuri, if it, make, if it makes it easier for me, oh sorry, it makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her. It's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide to that request. Whoa, okay. No poem for you today. Right, Monica. Hi again, Zazaris. That was kind of silly when I see earlier, wasn't it? I'm glad the two of you have been getting so along so well. <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Anyway, I already read your poem. So you can go ahead and read mine now. I like the way this one turned up. So I hope you do too. Okay, save me, load me. Bit more abstract. Okay, this is the same, so skip. Uh huh, huh. Got, got another argument? No, we haven't. Quick, it's amazing how quickly you forget things. Da -da 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 -da. Right, I'm gonna go with I would walk over with Nasuski. Walk over with Nasuski, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, I think I would be afraid of what she'll do to me if I turned her down. <laughs> She's so cute and fun to be around. That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ah, <laughs> you admit it. Gee, there's not, there's not even any point in expect, hey, speculating something that's never gonna happen. Well, maybe, but I just like to think about it. Not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sorry, I never needed you. It's you who needed me. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm feeling awkward. But it's, kind of, but it's kind of her fault for trapping me with such an awkward, weird question. I can't just lie to her. If there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take it away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen at that time. Yay, okay, part three might be the last part again. Wow, why was so... He's really so freak... Oh yeah, because it's the least explored, I think. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Might be the last part, I'm not sure. But, you know, I'll see you there.